Welcome to MDG friends, I'm Ryan. Let's do a commander deck tech. This one is in the pre-constructed of D&D, &D, Forgotten Realms. This is Verandas Rage of Ancients. We're gonna upgrade this bad boy. It is a legendary creature, Dragon Barbarian. Dragon Barbarian, hmm, what will they come up with next? In Rage, whenever Verandas Rage of Ancients is dealt damage, you may create a 5-4 red and green dragon spirit creature token with... When this creature deals damage, sacrifice it. Whenever you roll one or more dice, you may have Verandas deal one damage to itself. All right, so we're going to lever that damage stuff going on. Let's go ahead and look at the packages. So we got removal, draw, haste, the land package, uh, just one control piece, some protection, a few tutors, a shenanigan slash alt win condition, some alt combos, some pinging, and then of course we got some combo actions. And most importantly, a big amount of dragons and some ramp. Of course we got ramp, we're in green. Why wouldn't we have ramp? All right, so we know what Verandas is capable of doing. Let's jump in to removal. And of course, as usual, if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe and thanks for hitting the like button. It helps us a lot. All right, Beast Within, a very great removal spell in green. Destroy target permanent, it's controller. Creates a 3-3 beast. Blasphemous Act, if the board is wide, it costs one less for each creature and it does 13 damage. Decimate, destroy target artifact, target creature, target enchantment, and target land. I mean, <laughs> one, two, three, four. Three, four things for four mana. Yes, we're going to do that. Force of Vigor, destroy up to two target artifacts and or enchantments. Cost you nothing if you exile green card when it's not your turn. Flan Vandal Blast. This one does go against some of the mechanics of the deck. However, this is a reset button if we need it. Destroy target artifact you don't control or overload it for six and destroy all opponent's artifacts, which is great in a pinch. We're going to blast through the land package. Hopefully you're familiar with most of this ancient tomb. We got in this, we got Cavern of Souls, so our dragons can't be countered. Um, yes, yes, Command Tower for our colors. We got the pathway in our color. Desert, this is specifically for the commander. Deals one damage to target attacking creature. Activate only during the end of combat step. So we can ping it, create that 5-4 dragon. Zodic Orchard for some mana fixing. Fable Passage to crack. If you got four, it comes in untapped. All right, fire uh, lit thicket. This is for some mana fixing when we need it. We got some forest actions. We got Haven of the Spirit Dragon. This is mainly because we can crack it for two and go fetch up a dragon out of our grave yard. Or you can spit, tap it and spend any color for a dragon creature spell. All right, Mosswort Bridge. This is the one where we can hide a card. And then if we have um, control creatures that are 10 power or greater we can go ahead and play this card free of charge mountains reliquary tower for when we have some extra draw mechanics going on shatter skull this is the modal where you can play it for uh your red mana source and pay three life to do it or we can do some burn some removal deals x damage divide as you choose among up to two creatures and or planeswalkers and remember it's creatures you can't go to face on this one and then if you do six or more it does double damage all right spire garden this is the one that comes on untapped if you have two or more opponents we got the uh shock land in our colors we got the original gangster land in our colors swap this one out if you don't have it no big deal Tyrite Sanctum. This one is specifically in here because we want to inevitably give our commander um, indestructible in a few different ways and this is one of the cards that does it for two you can tap it target legendary creature becomes a god in addition to its other types P put a 1-1 counter on it the 1-1 counter is like gravy whatever but for four sacrifice it put an indestructible counter on target god that's great especially in this build and this particular commander all right we got the fetch land in our colors groovy groovy and then yavi maya cradle growth so that all of our lands are uh, force in addition to their other types yes indeed and remember this is for everyone and we don't have any force walk going on in this particular build but keep that in the back of your mind for other builds that you might do that yabi mai is great for creatures like say elves 
that uh, you want to have Boris Locke. All right, now we got a couple pingy, pinger pingersons. Uh, this one is great. It's also indestructible. Brash Tonner, whenever Brash Tonner is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to the target opponent. Brash Tonner fights another target creature. Now remember, you can fight our own commander with this one to create a dragon, if in a pinch, if we need to. Plus, it's a great, great blocker because if it blocks the damage that it gets, you can then redirect else where including the opponent's face so that's pretty cool all right indeed wait whenever brash honor is dealt damage it deals that much damage well okay so that's the only place you can do it to their face and we're cool with that cool all right caltrops this one's three whenever a creature attacks caltrops deals one damage to it so our commander goes attacking you get a dragon out of that plus if you're dealing with wide one one and shenanigans like that this one gives one damage to each of them that's pretty cool talking about elves again <laughs> all right now we have a interesting combo we got pandemonium whenever a creature comes into play that creature's controller may have it deal damage equal to its power to target creature or player of his or her choice so if we have pandemonium out and our commander, or if we have some combination thereof where we have Terror of the Peaks out, which whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. So that's fine and dandy. We can start generating different 5-4 uh, dragons. But on top of that, if you put the damage onto your own commander and he's got indestructible, through a few pieces that we have in this deck, including this one, target creatures indestructible this turn. So now suddenly our commander is indestructible. We go ahead and ping our commander, creates another dragon. The dragon enters, which then creates whenever a creature comes into play. That creature's controller may have it deal damage equal to its its power. So then you can just infinitely ping for infinite. You got it. Dragons. We love it. We like it. It's pretty awesome. And that um, damage is coming from Pandemonium, not from the dragon itself, which is important because if you read the commander again, if that dragon does the damage, then it has to be sacrificed. So we get around that having to sacrifice his loop, plus it does damage, or in a pinch, not to use that for, yes, the third time in this episode, we can be redirecting that damage elsewhere. And Terror of the Peaks is just another way of creating some serious, serious damage. Because whenever that creature enters the battlefield, that 5-4, that does damage equal to that creature's power to any target. So we can start directing that um, damage where we need to either create the infinite loop or to finish one of our opponents off or to destroy a creature on the battlefield. So awesome, so versatile. All right, so we got the combo intact for the um, withstand death indestructible we have a couple other pieces in this that also give our commander indestructible we'll get to that later all right let's go into the dragons because after all dragons are awesome and fun and have wings and all that cool stuff balefire dragon one of the coolest dragons i think that's out there it's a seven drop six six is a seven drop, but it does a lot of janky stuff. Flying, whenever Balefire Dragon deals combat damage to a player, it deals that much damage to each creature that player controls. This is one of those dragons that your opponent's going to want to deal with immediately because if it hits, it hits hard. Goldspan Dragon, this is as of this recorded in standard, is a super gross, super awesome card. Whenever Goldspan Dragon attacks or becomes the target of a spell, create a treasure token that you can crack for two mana as long as Goldspan Dragon is on the battlefield. This is a great way to really ramp up and hit for four because it's got haste. All right, Hellkite Charger. Whenever Hellkite Charger attacks, you may pay seven. If you do untap all attacking creatures in after this phase, there is an additional combat Phase. Can you imagine creating all those dragons, swinging with Hellkite Charger, then you get a swing again? I mean, <laughs> very nice. I mean, by that point, if you have that many dragons, you've already won the game anyways. 
All right, Hellkite Tyrant. So we have some generation of tokens built into this. Uh, we got some artifact action going on. Um, this is just a beefy 6-5 flyer with trample with an alt win built in. Whenever Hellkite Tyrant deals combat damage to a player, gain control of all artifacts that player controls. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control 20 or more artifacts, you win the game. All right, and we do have an infinite uh, combo in here that generates treasure tokens so we'll talk about that in a moment as well inferno of the star mounts this is right out of the most recent adventures in the forgotten realms this is a nice tasty dragon this spell can't be countered that's at you you blue folk flying haste for one inferno of stars mounts gets one O until in turn when his power becomes 20 this way it deals 20 damage to any target Whoo we look at that shenanigans that's pretty gross all right cloth unrivaled ancient seven drop it costs too much i think it should be six but we'll take it flying haste four four whenever cloth unrivaled ancient attacks add x mana in any combination of colors where x is the total power of attacking creatures spend this mana only to cast spells until end of turn you don't lose this mana as steps and phases in talk about mana ramp wow all right, Lathless Dragon Queen, six drop, six, six, flying dragon. Whenever another non token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a five, five red dragon creature token with flying. And for two dragons you control, get plus one, plus oh, until end of turn. I mean, multiple dragons here are almost in essence alt win conditions. Leyline Tyrant for four, four, four flyer. You don't lose unspent red mana as steps and phases end. This is so funny, especially for generating a bunch of mana. Whenever Leyline Tyrant dies, you may pay any amount of red when you do. It deals that much damage to any target. Target. So that can be a player. That can be a creature. That is really, really hilarious. Nesting Dragon. This is really nice if you have a board wipe situation. It's got landfall whenever land enters the battlefield under your control. Create a 0 02 red dragon egg creature token with defender. And when this creature dies, create a 2 2 red dragon uh, creature token with flying and red. This creature gets plus one until end of turn. So we have a wrath of God happen, but we have eggs out there. Suddenly our board is filled up again. I love it. It's so nice. All right, here's another just fantastic one out of uh, D and D. Old Gnaw Bone for seven. I did the pre-release and cracked one of these as my promo. I was so excited. I should have like grabbed that and showed this here, but uh, yeah, I didn't. All right, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, create that many treasure tokens. Hmm. Can you imagine if you have Tyrant out and then suddenly you have uh, twenty or more? I mean, that's that's pretty awesome. So, but even barring that, every damage that a creature does, you get that many tokens. That's pretty cray cray. All right, Terror of Mount Velus, seven drop, five, five, flying double strike. Whenever Terror of Mount Velus enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain double strike until end of turn. I mean, dragons just are super powerful. There's just no other way of putting it. Thunder Dragon for seven, five, five, flying. Whenever Thunder Dragon enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to each creature without flying thunder maw hill kite oh this is just really cool artwork if you ask me flying haste whenever thunder maw hell kite enters the battlefield deals one damage to each creature with flying your opponent control tap those creatures <laughs> i just find that hilarious say you got a bunch of just little one one flyers that are blockers that are annoying the crap out of you well this is one way to take care of them for sure Utvara Hellkite 7 drop 6 6. Yeah, a lot of our dragons are 7 drop 6 drops, but you know what? We get a lot out of them. Whenever a dragon you control attacks, create a 6 6 red dragon creature token with flying. All right, and then Dragon's Horde. We're in draw now. Whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, put a gold counter on Dragon Horde. And notice it says Dragon enters the battlefield. That does not mean cast. So when we get one of those tokens, that is a dragon. That counts. Remove a gold counter from Dragon Horde. Draw a card. Add one mana of any color. So on top of all of that, it's also a mana rock, which is why we have it in here, because that is just very nice versatility. More draw. Whenever a creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card, which is going to be like always in this deck. Garrick's Uprising, another one where we're talking about beefy creatures. When it enters the battlefield and you have a creature with power four or greater, draw a card. Creatures you control have trample. Double duty! 
This card is a sleeper Awesomeus Maximus card. Whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Lurking Predators for 6. This is just amazing. Yes, it does cost 6, but once we get things rolling, this thing is off the hook cool. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, you may put that card on the bottom of your library. So we get to sift through and get our creatures out. Yes, yes, indeed. And it's pretty much going to be a dragon. All right, return of the wild speaker. If we need draw, that's mainly what this is here for, which is the non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of the turn. We don't care about that. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control. So we, in essence, are most likely going to be drawing six cards, seven cards. Mm, yeah, roughly about that. That's great. Sylvan Library, at the beginning of your draw step, you may draw two additional cards. If you do, choose two cards in your hand, draw this turn. Draw on this turn. For each of those cards, pay for life or put the card on top of your library. I mean, Sylvan Library, at this point, if you've seen any amount of our deck techs, you know that Sylvan Library is a huge staple for draw and grave. Another huge draw uh, mechanic is the Great Henge, but you need to have big, beefy creatures for the most part for this to be lever. So if you have like, I don't know, an elf deck or a squirrel deck or something where you're dealing with one, one power, two power, three power, then the Great Henge isn't necessarily a card you want to run. Spell costs X less to cast where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Add two green, you gain two life. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it and draw a card. So we drop a creature on, draw a card, get a plus one, plus one. Plus we can also use a mana rock. I mean, it's just incredible. It's an incredible card. More draw, Toski Bear of Secrets. This thing is so sticky. Such a pain in the ass for your opponent. It's great. I have a Squirrel Tribal deck where Toski is the commander. You can check that one out at your leisure. It's just such an amazing draw mechanic. And it comes out early on turn four. This spell can't be countered. It's indestructible. And attacks each turn if able. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. I mean... It's got it all, folks. It's got it all. Wheel of Misfortune. It's a three drop. Each player secretly chooses a number between zero or greater. Then all players reveal those numbers simultaneously and determine the highest and lowest numbers revealed this way. Wheel of Misfortune deals damage equal to the highest number to each player who chose that number. Each player who didn't choose the lowest number discards their hand, then draws seven cards. So it's a Wheel of Fortune uh, in a different slight slightly different way that's more fun and political and doesn't cost you a few hundred dollars so yes we're going to use that in this all right we got one control piece um you can swap this out depending on uh, how froggy you're feeling but it is very useful if you control a commander you may cast a spell without paying its mana cost and they won't be expecting it you may choose new targets for target spell or ability so you can um redirect a removal spell you can redirect a counter um, that's targeting something i mean there's just a lot of cool stuff all right perforos god of the forge so this is shenanigans at its base but it also can help with your infinite combo that we talked about earlier Perforos God of the Forge is indestructible as long as your devotion to red is less than five. Perforos isn't a creature. We don't even really care whether this thing's a creature or not. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Perforos deals two damage to each opponent. So if we manage to hit our infinite dragons combo, this is going to do infinite two damage to your opponent. So that is nice. So you can... Um, do the two damage to opponent until he's dead then do the rest to the next and the next and the next and then on top of all that for three creatures you control get plus one plus oh until end of the turn eh, that's a nice little uh added bonus yo added bonus all right let's go to the other somewhat uh combo alt combo sacrifice creature blasting station deals one damage to target creature or player whenever Creature comes into play, you may untap Blasting Station. So, a couple things that we can use here. One, we could do the one damage to our commander to get things rolling, which creates a dragon. And then 
we can start the infinite loop if that's what you need to get that engine going. You can sack that dragon, which untaps it, which you can then do it again, do it again, do it again, and then you can got you have infinite damage, which is super nice. So blasting station is in here to do some blasting, yo. All right, so here is an interesting infinite treasures uh, combination. When Dockside Extortionist enters the battlefield, create X creature tokens where X is the number of artifacts and enchantments your opponent controls. How do we go infinite with this, you say? All right, if your opponents have five, a minimum of five collectively, artifacts and or enchantments, then we use Tamir Sabertooth to go ahead and drop Extortionist onto the battlefield. That creates you five treasure tokens. And notice this costs you two to do, which means we need another one, two. And then you can go ahead and return the extortionist back to your hand. And if you do, Sabretooth gains indestructible. So for four, we're going to be making a minimum of five, which means that extortionist goes infinite, infinite treasures at your uh, disposal. Again, in review, as long as you have five enchantments and artifacts that your opponents have, that means that this goes infinite with Saber Tooth in play. Lovely, lovely indeed. All right, so we got Ramp Signet, our colors, yes. Cultivate, we're not doing Mana Dorks in this build because we want to ramp up the lands and get things popping, get them crack a Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards. Put one on the battlefield. Tap in the other in your hand. Yes. Cultivate. Goreclaw Terror of Qualcisma. I think I did that right. Creature spells you cast with power four or greater cost two less. Whenever Goreclaw Terror of uh, Qualcisma attacks, each creature you control, um, each creature you control with power four or greater gets a plus one, plus one, and gains trample in turn. So we can even give it trample. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, we got our signet in our colors. Jaska's Will. I mean, this seems like such a staple in red at this point, especially in Commander. Choose one. If you control a Commander as you cast the spell, you could choose both. Add red for each card in target opponent's hand, and that's collectively all of them. So that's a lot of mana ramp. Exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn. So if you've got your Commander out, you get to do both, which is pretty darn cool. Mana Crypt. We can tap it for two, do three damage if we lose the flip. Marauding Raptor specifically in here for our commander mechanics and it makes creature spells cost one less to cast Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control Marauding Raptor deals two damage to it If a dinosaur is dealt damage this way Marauding Raptor gets plus two until in turn We're not dealing with dinosaurs, so we don't give a rip about that Regavan Nimble Pilfer for one two one. This is a spendy financial card, but that's because it's go Ruby Whenever Ragman Nimble Pilfer deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token and ex exile the top card of that player's library. Until end of turn, you may cast that card. <laughs> it didn't even need that last part to be great, but that last part makes it super great. And then you can dash it for two. It just means it goes back into your hand at the end of uh, beginning of the end step, I think. Oh, now I'm going to have to read the damn thing. You may cast this spell for its dash cost. If you do, it gains haste and is returned from the battlefield to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. All right, there you go. There you go. All right, Sky Shroud. So we can go search your library for two force cards, put them into play, and those are untapped, by the way. Soul Ring. Yep, Soul Ring. Three visits. Search your library force card. Put it. Notice it's a force card. So this can be a shock land. This can be a triome for you triome players. And then uh, put it on the battlefield, then sh shuffle your library. Although I suppose the Trium comes in tapped anyway. So eh, it's mostly about being able to go grab a shock land and stuff like that. Xenagus, God of Revels, uh, still in ramp. Is, are we in ramp? This isn't a ramp card, is it? As long as your devotion to red and green is less than seven, uh, it isn't a creature. At the beginning of combat of your turn, another target creature you control gains haste and gets XX until end of turn. This is not ramp. This is haste. I'm going to fix that. I'll fix that at the end. All right, that's a haste card. Oh, speaking of haste, here we go. So we'll just fix that in a moment. All right, anger, haste. As long as anger is in your graveyard and you control a mountain, creatures you control get 
Haste. Rhythm of the Wild. This is all about haste, really. Creature spells you control can't be countered. We like that for you uh, blue hate people out there. Non-token creatures you control have riot. Riot, all that is is you can either put a 1-1 counter on it or give it haste. Well, we're, we're giving it haste for sure. Urabras the Hidden. Creatures you control have haste. Creatures your opponent control enter the battlefield tapped. That last part, you wouldn't think it matters all that much, but oof, does that matter? All right, we got some protection. A dark steel plate for three and equip two. Dark steel plate is indestructible. A creature is indestructible, and we're putting that, you guessed it, right on our commander if possible. Another card for some indestructible action. Whenever Hammer of Nazan or another equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach that equipment to target creature you control. Yes, so that equip four goes out the window if it's uh, entering the battlefield. All right, we got a little bit of protection. A heroic intervention, permission you control again, hexproof and indestructible in turn. Such a staple protection piece in green. Vexing Shusher, this spell can't be countered. Target spells can't be countered. Um, it's more control than protection, or is it? I don't know. But yeah, this makes it so that our spells can't be countered. That's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome, this Maximus. All right, we got a few tutors like Gamble. Search your library for a card, tutor that up, and then discard a card at random. Don't like the discard part, but I like the tutor part. Green Sun Zenith. We can search our library for a green creature card with convert a man cost X or less, put on the battlefield, and put that back in your library. All right, we're going to tutor up a dragon with this. Search your library for a dragon creature card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Worldly Tutor. Search for a creature, put it on top of your library. All right, Dragon Tempest. This is just jank, jankalicious fun with dragons. Uh, and we're in Dragon Sport. Yep. Whenever a creature with flying enters the battlefield under your control, it gains haste until end of turn. Most of our creatures are flyers, and the tokens that we're creating are also. So that works splendidly with the. Uh, infinite dragon creation we got going on whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control it deals x damage to target creature or player where x is the number of dragons you control you see how this can get real gross real quick right right dragon lord servant this is uh dragons become uh one less to cast dragon speaker shaman dragons become two less to cast kindred summons we can go uh, top deck a bunch of dragons choose a creature reveal that many uh, X creature cards of the Tosian type where X is the number of creatures you control of that type put those creatures on the battlefield Yes, yes now Really this is probably a swappable card if there's something you're really wanting to put in here And this would probably be one of the top three that I would swap out if needed Mag the Brazen Outlaw. This is just to get us some extra tokens early on. Hopefully you, you hit this early game, mid game. Uh, sacrifice five treasure tokens for the mid game, late game. And then we can go fetch up a dragon and put it on the battlefield. That is two thumbs up in my book for dragon tribal-ish stuff. Sarkon Fireblood. This is such cool artwork, man. I wish I could hold fire in my hand like that. That would be awesome. You may discard a card if you do draw a card. Mm, yeah, that's fine. Uh, more importantly, it's plus one. Add two mana in any combination of colors. Spend that mana only to cast dragons. That's what we're all about. And its ultimate is just sort of a bonus. Create four, five, five red dragon creature tokens with flying. That brings us full circle, folks. Uh, we'll go ahead and fix that haste card, which is down, down, down here. That goes into haste, people. That's a haste card. And it does extra janky stuff, too. But thanks for tuning in. This one should be super fun for you to play. And uh, lots of dragon action. All right. Peace. Check out our other episodes. And thanks for being a supporter.